All right, thank you for joining us as we study the fifth trumpet. You know, the fifth trumpet is fascinating to study because it is the first in a series of three woe trumpets. Trumpets which announce extreme events or judgments that are to transpire on the earth. And you know, the first four trumpets took up only about seven verses, but the fifth trumpet takes up 11 verses all on its own. And perhaps the reason it takes up more verses than the other four combined is that there is more going on during the fifth trumpet that needs to be explained. And also because it foretells of an unleashing of spiritual wickedness, such as has never been seen before, for a division of Satan's army will be let loose upon the earth. Are you prepared? Many people try and figure out exactly when each of the seven trumpets will blow and align them with various events of the last days. I've got some of my own ideas that I may share with you in the future, but let's take a look at what we do know for sure. We know that the trumpets, thunders, and vials take place during the last days and most likely all take place within the last seven years of Daniel 9.27 or slightly before. But I do believe we have some help charting these trumpets by our Lord Jesus Christ because in Matthew 24 verse 6 he said, And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. For nation shall rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. The beginning of sorrows. Keep that in your mind, because it appears as though at least the first four trumpets would fit within this portion called the beginning of sorrows, leading up to the time of the Great Tribulation. And we know that the Great Tribulation begins when the abomination of desolation, otherwise known as the Antichrist, sits in the temple of God, claiming to the world that he is God. And when this happens, Christ said in Matthew 24, verse 21, that then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world no, nor ever shall be. So, we say that the first four trumpets could possibly fit within the uh, period known as the beginning of sorrows because um, when you take a look at, the, at what happens during those first four trumpets, they seem to align with the things that Christ said here in these verses. But as far as the fifth trumpet is concerned, we'll document towards the end of this study that this trumpet covers a five-month segment of the entire seven-year period. The entire tribulation cannot be crammed into this single trumpet, as some suggest. It's not even up for debate, as we'll show later in the study. So be sure to watch every part of this study so you don't miss out on anything, for these things are very important for us to understand. All right, let's get right to this fifth trumpet by turning with me to Revelation chapter 9, verse 1. And it reads, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So what does the star symbolize? Well, we know from Isaiah chapter 14 that there was an archangel there named Lucifer, who was the bright and morning star. And he fell from heaven during his rebellion and was later named or renamed Satan, meaning the adversary. So this is none other than Satan himself, who was given the key to the bottomless pit. And what happens next? And when he had opened the bottomless pit, there arose a smoke out of the pit as the smoke of a great furnace, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. So this is going to be quite the event that will happen um, when this fifth trumpet blows. But before we get any further into this, we must understand what this bottomless pit is, for it is essential to understand this before we can even move on to understand the rest of this trumpet. 
The word bottomless pit in the Greek is the Greek word abusos, and it means an infernal abyss or the holding place of demons, evil spirits, evil angels, etc. So it's, it's kind of like their prison. And we'll get into that in a little bit, but um, this word is used, the word abusos or abyss, is used um, a few other places in the book of Revelation here. Um, in Romans chapter 10, verse 7, it's used there as well. And in Luke chapter 8, verse 31. And we're going to go there, um, Luke chapter 8, verse 31, so that we can understand what this abyss is. Because, you know, a lot of people, when reading symbolism in the book of Revelation, like to kind of insert their own opinions of what they think things symbolize. I mean, if you grab a stack of commentaries and go through them, you'll see all kinds of men's imaginations and men's opinions. But you know what? In order to understand those symbols in that great book of Revelation, all you have to do most often is just go back to somewhere else in the scriptures, even, even sometimes all the way back in the Old Testament, and you'll find your answers there. You'll find other witnesses to the same event, to the same truth that is being um, revealed to us. And I feel we're going to understand what that abyss is from reading the words of our Lord in Luke chapter 8, verse 26. And it reads, And they arrived at the country of the Gadarenes, which is over against Galilee. And when he went forth to the land, there met him out of the city a certain man which had devils long time, and wear no clothes, neither abode in any house, but in the tombs. So this guy was, you know, he was, uh, he was out of his mind. He was running around the graveyards naked with no clothes on. Today, somebody like this would be locked up in a mental institute. And, uh, but the reason this guy was doing this is because he was crazy possessed with demons. Verse 28, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and with a loud voice said, what have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou son of God, most high, I beseech thee, torment me not. You know, it's quite interesting that even the demons knew um, that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of God. And that's because they, they are supernatural as well. It's just that they are uh, the evil part of the supernatural. And, but they do have abilities. They have strength. They can, they can do many things. As, as well as we see in this case, get inside of somebody's mind and control their entire body. Um, so they're begging Jesus not to torment him. Verse 29, for he commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. You know, our Lord has power over all the power of the enemy. And you know what? He's given us many powers as well. As we're going to find out. For oftentimes it had caught him and he was kept bound with chains and in fetters, and he brake the bands and was driven of the devil into the wilderness. So we see here that these demons, these evil spirits, gave this man supernatural powers to the point, or supernatural strength, to the point where he could break chains and just bust out of them as he would wander around in the wilderness like a crazy man. Verse 30. And Jesus asked him, saying, What is thy name? It's quite interesting here. The answer we are going to get, I believe, even helps us understand more of uh, what's, uh, what's going to happen during the fifth trumpet. And he said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. That's what the, that's what the demon responded with. We are legion. Meaning, you know, in the Roman, uh, a Roman legion consisted of about 6,000 infantry with a contingent of cavalry. 
And in Rome, there was about 25 to 35 of these legions in their entire army. So this is, this is quite a group of, of these demonics inside this man. And I feel, it's, I feel Christ is pointing out um, something to us. And I feel this is in connection with the fifth trumpet. Because in that trumpet, we are going to see legions of these uh, evil demonics loosed from that pit, loosed from the abyss to come upon this earth. Again, like I said in the beginning, are you prepared? Are you prepared to handle the supernatural events that are about to transpire in the near, near future? You know, it's fascinating. There's been so many sightings lately of all kinds of different supernatural, uh, you could even call paranormal events, such as UFOs and, uh, and things of that nature. Are some of them fake? Yes, some people, some people fake that stuff. But we know from God's Word that many of these things do exist. They're very real. And uh, we're about to see a lot more of them. So it's important that we learn from these lessons that Christ uh, uh, took the time to teach us. For all these examples that, uh, or all these events that Christ went through, were examples for us to learn from. They always had a, a deeper teaching within them for those of us who live during the last days and we're in them. So we see here there is a legion of these guys. Verse 31, and they besought him. This is key. This is why we came here. Now listen closely to this verse. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. You know what that word deep is in the Greek? It's the Greek word abusos. It means the abyss, the holding place, or the prison for the demons, evil spirits, evil angels. Now, they didn't want to go back there. They didn't want to be held there. And they were begging our Lord not to send them there. Why is that important to this study? Well, in order to understand the fifth trumpet, we must understand... Um, you know, what's inside of that pit? Because we're going to see things come out of that pit when we go back to Revelation chapter 9. And there are things that people could read many different things into. But now we know what's in there. So obviously what comes out of there must be what goes in there. Those types of things. And we know here we are speaking of demons, evil spirits. 31... Or 32, and there was, and there was there and heard of many swine feeding on the mountain, and they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them, and he suffered them. They didn't want to go to that place so bad that they asked our Lord if they would just, if he could just send them into the swine, into the pigs. But what do the pigs do? Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the lake and were choked. Okay, even the swine knew better than to allow these demonics to control them. And you know what? Many people allow demonics to control them today. They, they leave themselves susceptible by opening the door to them by things they, things they read, things they listen to, and things they want to believe, and many other different ways. And, uh, well, you know, I'm referring to, um, well, I guess many different things. And uh, many of you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. But let's, let's see what uh, happens after this. Verse 34, and when they, when they that fed them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it in the city and in the country. You know, that must have been quite the thing. Verse 35, then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found the man, and found the man out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, 